Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, we're gonna remove the splint from the broken oak. If you've been following the channel, you may recall that this tree back here, that's a, uh, I believe it's just an elm, American elm. A branch broke on that last year and it landed right on top of this tree. I wanted to save this tree because we have very few trees along the road. I went through here and killed all the weed trees and planted some burr oaks. There's three burr oaks growing in there. They're kind of small. And I wanted this one here this is gonna be a tall specimen, like a couple of the ones over here. Well, kind of like these right here, big old trees. It's gonna take a while for this one, but what I did, see it broke the top. So I took the branch that was nearest to the top and put a splint on the tree and then pulled that branch upright. And now that branch Oh, it's probably grown over a foot this year, but I gotta remove this splint. I can't leave this on here forever. I was gonna take it off last year, but I never got around to it. So, yeah, you can see it's pressing into the branch and stuff. The tree will be all right, but this has to get out. But the only way I can do that is to set up, I believe it's a 12 foot ladder. It's either 10 or 12. Set that up right in here and I got to kind of weave my way into here and then I got to gingerly climb up there and get that top stuff cut. I had to use two or three blocks of wood to level the ladder off last year so it's not as easy as it looks. Once I have that splint off you could see it's bending the splint. I think the tree is gonna have a pretty pronounced hook to it. And then I'm not really sure what that top part's gonna do. The entire tree is probably gonna have a big S to it, kind of like some of these other trees. Well, I'll show you this one right away. This birch right here, I don't know what happened to it to do that, but it also goes up and then has like a S right there. Hopefully it doesn't look as bad as this one, but they do some weird stuff. I was hoping for something like this, just a nice, really straight tree, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Another thing I wanted to show you, it's not very far along. I made three prunes and I cut each one differently. This bottom one, this is the way that they recommend you do a prune these days right at the face of the collar, which would be like right here. And this next one was flush with the tree. And then this last one up here was flush with the tree. And I took a rasp and rounded the edges. I made this like dead smooth. And the reason I did the three different cuts like that was to show you what the scars look like when this heals up. These two are gonna heal up beautifully. The scar is gonna be barely visible and there really isn't a place for water to catch. These, on the other hand, they're always at a slight angle. Water can catch right here and these can start rotting before they heal up. I don't agree with the consensus that this is the way to do pruning. Not at all. And I'll show you some prunes on the tree right behind the house that I did a couple years ago. They look beautiful when done this way or this way. And then I have other cuts. These are all healed up. I have other cuts that are like this, the recommended type, and those still aren't healed up. All right. I gotta go get the ladder and something to cut these zip ties and I'll be right back. I'll show you these right away. This is a flush cut prune that was done, I believe this was four years ago. This and this right here. 
and this one right here. This was done last year. It's starting to heal up already. This will look just like this in a couple years. And this was a collar cut. This was done, oh, what was that? Two or three years ago. And it's still working on closing that up. Yeah, I do not believe this is the way to go. And I don't do it this way anymore. I only started doing it that way because I saw it on a video and they said that was the new way it's done. And once I seen what the results were, I switched back. Yeah, that is a beautiful scar right there. Same with that. All right, don't need a whole lot for this. Just stuff to put under the legs and this is a 10 foot ladder and a side snips. That should do it. Okay, I'm all set up. It's not as far off a level as I thought, but I do remember the ladder being all mashed up into the branches like this. And I believe I broke some of the branches last year when I was doing this. I don't think I've broken anything yet, but I may on my way up, but that splint has to come off. So let's get this done. I start falling it's really nothing to grab a hold of this tree isn't gonna support me all right we had a couple broken branches here this was the top of the tree and this was a branch like this that I just pinched up oh, I gotta go up one more step Hopefully, this thing doesn't go too crazy. And like I said, it may lean a good deal over to the side, but it also could correct that, correct itself over the next few years. I was sick of seeing this rope up here as well. So far, so good. Yeah, that elm branch really smashed the heck out of this tree. Well, so far, so good. It hasn't really sprung over much at all. Still got three left. Yeah, that made her move. Still didn't go over that much. Oh, that's not bad at all. This will probably straighten itself out just fine. Yeah, it does hang a right like that but I do believe the top the new top I made for it will continue to be the top but we'll see what happens over the next couple years all right yeah that's not bad at all that's pretty darn straight that branch when it fell it took off all the branches on this side and the top. So I had to cut all that stuff off. I was just gonna cut the tree down, but then I decided, well, if I tip that topmost branch up and prune that stuff off, maybe I can save the tree. And it's looking like it's saved. We'll probably have an S shape right there, even in the final tree, but who knows? We'll take a look at this again 
in the coming years, maybe once a year or so, and see how it does. We'll update those scars and we'll see how the shape of the tree is doing. And that should be pretty interesting. All right, let's go take a look at my burr oak trees. Like I said, there's three of them. One of them's right over here, but I think I'll go to the end of the road and turn around and we'll start with the furthest one down. I just pruned that one and the one in the middle. The one over here is really tiny, but I'm hoping it's going to grow a good deal this year. We'll see. Let's go take a look. Okay. When I planted these trees, I got 25 one foot burr oak trees and there was five along the road here in the woods. The first two died and the next one is that tiny one and they kind of get bigger as you go. This one was always the biggest, but now that next one I believe is bigger than this. And the problem was that you could see these branches, this split into four exactly the same size branches. We had one here, one here, and one here. I just cut off the other three, so this hasn't had a real long time to grow. It's about four feet tall. This is either the beginning of the third year or the beginning of the fourth year for these. I'll look that up and put it on the screen. I believe the video when I planted these was planting 25 burr oaks or something like that. So what I'm trying to do with this, the reason I cut off these three stems is so that it doesn't waste its time getting real nice and wide. I want this to grow tall, at least like 10 feet tall so it gets some light. These things get buried in the weeds every year and this is the first year that it's taller than the weeds and it just got that way. It was this tall at the beginning of the year and like I said it sent out them four tops and I just got rid of three of them. The next one looks a lot better. I believe this is the beginning of their fourth year. I planted them three years ago. Yeah, this one is behaving. It's got a nice, well-defined top. These, I don't care if it grows side branches, but I don't want them to be equal to the top branch and the thing just get really wide. Yeah, that's looking really good. These are some invasive weed that just started growing around here maybe three years ago or so. I come in here and weed this every once in a while, but don't want to get into that right now. Okay, and now we'll go look at that tiny one. I need to do a little thinning around it. There's a birch tree that goes right over it that I thought I killed, but I didn't, and I'm gonna have to do that. We'll go look at that one real quick and then end up back at the Broken Oak, and we'll end the video there. Okay. This one, this is how these trees have looked basically every year until this year, like this except with tiny little leaves. This one is finally starting to do something. I have to clear the weeds much further back so that it gets early light down into here. But this is a problem. I'm gonna hack and squirt and kill this birch here later this year. And next year, this will have a lot more light. I'm hoping that that gets up to at least four feet by the end of the year, but it remains to be seen. So that last tree is right there. And here's our broken oak. Yeah, that does not look bad at all. My plans for this tree were to take off the lower branches one or two every year. So in the fall, 
I'll probably take this branch off and then next year I'll probably take all three of these off and I'll probably go a little further. By that time the top will have a lot more branches on it. We want to be able to see into the woods and we don't want any branches coming over the road. So that's the reason why we're taking out the lower branches. So this will be a really interesting case study. A lot to see on this over the coming years. So if you want to see that or any of these other trees along the woods here, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.